What's up guys, today we're going to be tackling this render, as you can see it's another psychedelic one, uh, so if you have been following my tutorials, you'll probably recognise some of the techniques that I'm going to show, but you'll still end up with this really cool render, and I'm going to be showing a few more things as well which you might not know, so yeah, on with the tutorial. So select the cube, hit X, and delete that. Now hit Shift A, and we're going to add a mesh, and we're going to add a cone. Come to this menu here, on your bottom left, drop the vertices down to 3, and just come out of that. Now we're going to come to our modifier section here, just this little spanner, and we're going to add a modifier, and I want you to add an array modifier. We're going to pump the count up to 10, and as you can see it's duplicated this pyramid 10 times, but we're going to pump the factor on the x-axis up to 2, so we get some nice even spacing. Now I want this arrayment to sort of follow a curve path in a circle, so the way we do that is hit Shift A, come to Curve, and we're going to add a circle. And I'm just going to scale that up so we have some reference. So just hit S and just drag that up a bit. Now come back to your cone, click on your cone, add a modifier, and we're going to add a curve modifier. And this curve modifier is going to allow us to guide the arrayment along this circle we just created. So back on your cone, on the curve modifier, come to this little box here on curve objects and just select Bezier circle. That should be there. Now you'll see what I mean, the pyramids are sort of um, following this path. So next step, we're just going to align our camera. So click on your camera, hit Alt-G to reset the location, and hit Alt-R to reset the rotation. Now if you hit G and then Z, we're going to bring the camera up on the Z axis. And if you hit 0, that lets you see through the camera view. So if you just hit G and Z again, and just bring it up to about here. And we're gonna scale the circle in a bit, just so we can get a sort of even distribution of uh, pyramids along the circle. So yeah, click on your circle again, hit S, and just bring that in. And what you wanna do, you wanna look at the two triangles on the y-axis and just make sure they align properly. So if you hold Shift while you're scaling, it allows you to be a bit more precise. So just drag that up until the top one and the bottom one perfectly align. And then just click, and there you go. Next step, I want these to rotate. So select your cone, come to location settings, and on your rotation, you'll see you've got three parameters that you can rotate from. So we're gonna do a rotation on the X axis. So we're gonna do it like that, you see? To animate that, you wanna bring your timeline up. We're gonna make it a 10 second loop. So we're at 24 frames per second. So if you do the math, that will be 240 frames for 10 second loop. So come to the start of your timeline. On your cone, apply a keyframe on the rotation axis and come to the end frame. But you want to make sure you go to 241, otherwise there'll be a glitch in your render and you'll get a duplicate frame. So yeah, just make sure you're at 241. Come back to the x-axis, pump that up to 360 and add a keyframe. And when you hit play, you'll see you get this cool sort of rotation effect and it loops seamlessly. But you'll notice when you do it, it sort of slows down when it comes to an end. Now we want it to be a constant animation, so we're gonna select, so we're gonna select all the keyframes. So hit A with your mouse over the timeline, then hit T and just change the interpolation to linear. And that's gonna stop it from smoothing out towards the end. It's just gonna be a constant animation, which is what you want. Now the next step, I want these pyramids to have a sort of wireframe around them. So we're going to add another modifier. So back to your cone, on your modifier properties, add a modifier, add a wireframe. And you'll see what that does is it removes the faces and adds a wireframe over the edges. Um, I want to keep the faces in this case. So if you come down to your wireframe properties, just uncheck replace original. And that's just going to keep the faces, adding the wireframe on top of the mesh. Now we're going to jump into render mode and do some shading. So if you just want to save what you got for now, so come to file, just save as. Cool, once you save that, hit Z and then 8. That will take you into render mode. Now we can start adding some light and some colour to the scene. So the first thing I always do is come to the world settings, which is just this thing here. I'm going to change the colour to black. And I'm also going to delete this light because we don't need that. We're going to be using emission shading to light up the scene. So just click on that light, hit X and delete. Now you're not going to be able to see anything because there's no light obviously. 
Uh, but what we're going to do, as I said, we're, we're going to use emission shading to light up the scene. So click on your cone. And we're going to come to the material settings and we're going to add a material. So this is going to be our base material. And this material is going to be the faces of the cone. But we're going to also add another material which we're going to use to shade the wireframes. So just click plus and add a new material. And we're going to add another new one. And we're going to select add new. And on the surface, we're going to change that to emission. But you're going to notice it's had no effect. So it's still black. And the reason is because we haven't assigned the wireframe to this material yet. So if you come back to your modifier settings, just come back to the wireframe modifier. And you'll see here, you can actually assign um, the wireframe to a specific material. So you, this little material offset, just pump that up to one. And now you're going to see what it's done. It's just applied this emission shader to the wireframes. And you're going to see that this material, the first one, is going to be applied to the faces of the object. Now we're going to pump the strength up to 20, give it a nice strong sort of glow. And then on the base material, we're going to pump up the metallic. And we're also going to drop down the roughness, which you're not going to see the effect of that just yet. But that's going to allow um, the faces to reflect light coming off of the wireframes. It's just going to add a bit more depth later. So next step, we're going to duplicate these. To do that, you want to not just duplicate the cone, you want to duplicate the bezier circle as well. So click on your cone, hold control, click on your bezier circle, hit shift D and hit S so you scale it. And we're just going to bring it down to about here. And the reason why we duplicate both is because if you start scaling just the cones is it's going to sort of affect the symmetry and the um, alignment of your objects so yeah make sure you duplicate both of them and make sure you're scaling them both together so now we're going to add a bit of variation to the color because I think white is a bit boring so we're going to click on our cone and we're going to come to the material settings here and just come to the material 2 the emission that's where the, uh, the color is coming from we're going to change the color to a nice sort of blue I think and we want to change the color of the second one as well. So come to your other cone and just do the same, but choose a different color. And what you'll notice is that when you change the second cone, it's actually changing the color of both objects. Now we don't want that. So we're just going to hit control Z. So we go back to the blue. Now, because we duplicated these, it means that the materials are linked as well. So all you need to do is on your second cone, just come to the emission material and just select this X here and that's going to unlink the material and it's also going to delete it so if you just add a new one again and just follow the same steps add an emission shader pump it up to 20 and now you can change the color we're going to go over sort of pinky purple I think that's looking cool so hit play and you get this really cool pattern just make sure the two objects aren't clipping into each other and they are a little bit so I'm just going to so I'm just going to scale these two down a bit more, just so the objects don't clip, just a touch. I also want a different rotation pattern on the smaller one. So I'm going to click on the cone, come to my location settings, and you'll see we have these keyframes. Just come to the last one, go to 241, and we're going to double the rotation so it spins a little bit faster. So change that to 720 and just reset the keyframe. And just hit A, T, and linear, just to make sure it's a linear interpolation. And now we get a faster rotation on the inner one. Just adds a little bit of variation. Now, we're going to bring this scene to life. So first thing you want to do is you want to get these reflections to come through. So if you come to your render properties here, now we're doing this in Eevee, and we're going to add ambient inclusion. Bloom, well, I find the Eevee Bloom quite strong, so I'm going to drop the intensity down a bit to about here. And we're going to add screen space reflections. This is the important one if you want the light to sort of reflect, and you'll sort of see what it's doing. You're getting this reflection. We're going to come out of rendered mode now, so hit Z and then 6. And now I'm going to show you how to really bring the scene to life and get those sort of kaleidoscopic patterns that you saw in my render. So we're going to use a sphere to reflect the light off the wireframes, sort of like how it's behaving on the faces. But the way the sphere looks, as you'll see, Shift A, add a mesh, 
at a UV sphere, you'll see the faces on the sphere. If you look at the sort of way the faces are, this is the way the light's going to reflect, and it's going to create this really cool sort of kaleidoscope pattern. Really good if you're interested in making psychedelic sort of renders. So the first thing you want to do is just scale this sphere up. So hit S, just scale it up until it fills the whole object. And now we're just going to scale it on the Z axis. So hit S and then Z. And we're going to bring it all the way up to where the camera sort of starts, just to make sure we got the whole thing in view. Now if you hit zero, just make sure you can see the whole thing now, and you'll see the object is inside the sphere. And it's going to create this really awesome reflection effect. So now we're going to go back into render mode. So hit Z and then eight. And now you can, you can kind of see those reflections now. And we're going to bring out these reflections by adding material to the sphere. So we're going to take the overlays off for now, just get rid of those so we get an accurate representation of the render. Click on your sphere, add a new material, and this is going to be the material of the room. So pump the metallic all the way up and just drop the roughness all the way down. And now you can sort of see what we're getting at. And now when you hit play, you're going to get this really cool look. Now I'm just going to widen up the camera a bit so we get a bit more of these patterns in view. So if you click on your camera, come to the camera settings here, change the focal length. You can bring it down to where you want and feel free to adjust the colors of your cone as well. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to follow the same color pattern I have. And here's the cool thing about the um, the sphere as well. The higher you pump up the z-axis, the more reflections you get. So you can really pump it up to get these strong reflections if you want a sort of different pattern to me. But for the sake of the tutorial, I'm going to leave it as it was. Cool. So just save what you got now. Hit Control S. Just save it. Now I'm going to go back to my scene settings, and I'm just going to come back to color management. I'm just going to pump the contrast up. So I put it on very high contrast. I think it always looks better in these kind of renders. Now we're going to add some final touches with compositing, so if you find a frame that you like, just hit F12, just render one image, you need this in order to use the compositor, it's sort of a reference guide for the compositor, so yeah, just wait for that to render the image, and once that's done, just close that, you don't need it yet, just come to compositing, and we're going to select use nodes, and just drag that in, now this is the render that we just made, and we're going to use that to do to add some final touches to the final render. So what you want to do here is just hit Shift A, and you want to come to Output, and you want to add a Viewer node. This is going to allow us to see the edits that we're going to make to the image. So if you plug the image into the Viewer node, and we're going to add a filter. So hit Shift A, add filter, and we're going to add a glare node. And we're just going to pop that in between the two nodes. Alternatively, just plug it in yourself. You just drag that and plug it in, and then plug it into the viewer node. That looks pretty cool. You can use that if you want. But I'm going to use ghosts. I really like the ghost effect on this node. So change this to high, so we get a high quality. Click on this drop-down menu and change it to ghosts. I really like this effect. We're going to leave the iterations to free, but we're just going to change the color modulation. We're just going to pump that up a bit. Right, now we're going to render the animation with the compositor. And this is a crucial thing you need to do. If you render it out like this, it's not going to have any effects. Everything you do in here is going to be pointless. You need to make sure you also plug the glare nodes into your composite output node to make sure that it renders out with this effect. Right, now that that's done, the only thing left to do is to render the animation. So to do that, just come over here onto output properties. You want to save it somewhere you can find it. So on your output, so on output, just click on this thing and just save it anywhere other than the TMP folder. Just somewhere you can find it really. File format, change that to FFmpeg video. Just expand this encoding, change the container to MP4. Leave the video codec as H.264 and you want your output quality to be perceptually lossless. And now all you've got to do is come to render and hit render animation and you're done. Right, thank you guys for watching, and if you did make it to the end, please leave a like and subscribe. Really helps me grow the channel. And also, while you're at it, why not tag me in your render? I'd love to see what you guys come up with from the tutorials I'm putting out. So yeah, uh, tag me at Nebmotion on the Instagram. And also, while you're at it, why not check out 
my website where you can see more of my work. Um, I'll also be leaving the project file on my website if you want to download that. That's nemotion.co.uk.